Kapiti Island is one of Aotearoa's oldest and most important nature reserves. Close to the capital city of Wellington, the island is set aside for the protection of native plants and birds and where human influence is monitored and kept to a bare minimum. The titi, commonly known as mutton bird or sooty shearwater, is a taonga and breeds on islands in the South Pacific, including Kapiti Island. Unfortunately, introduced predators and habitat destruction, coupled with ongoing predation of eggs and chicks by weka, another taonga, have caused dramatic decline of the titi population. Kapiti Ice Cream has partnered with global conservation not-for-profit Wild Ark to support the Department of Conservation's three-year project to save the Titi colony from extinction on Kapiti Island. Nā mai, haere mai, ki te waiwai kapiti o tāra rawa ko rangi tānei ki wairua hoki. Kapiti is a, an island off the edge of Cook Strait, um, 10 kilometres long by 2 kilometres wide. Full nature reserve except for this 30 odd acre block in, in Wairua which is still owned by our whānau. Kapiti is significant certainly through history. Um, many tribes have occupied Kapiti at any one particular point in time. Um, each tribe that has been here has treated Kapiti with um, great respect. It was a taonga for all tribes that, that have lived here. So yeah, a very, very special place. I can't encapsulate it yet, but it's, also, it's almost like a, a constant. It's been a constant in my life. I think the word that comes to mind is sublime. You can't understand that until you, you come in on the boat and you stand there and just look up and see it's, um, yeah, the magnificence, I think, of it. Yeah, super special. Certainly since the, the rat eradication in 1996, we've seen a massive increase in bird life. Uh, tiki, saddleback, um, pupukautia, there's a whole array of birds that, that we're seeing and it's a really, it's a really cool, cool position for us to be in as whānau to, to view that. We have this colony up there um, of titi, so sooty shearwaters or mutton birds, uh, which are a tonga too local iwi and a very uh, important species around the country and there used to be titi all around the island. We only have about a hundred, two hundred burrows left. We are trying to prevent the, uh, the impending extinction of titi on Kapiti. Titi are such an important component of our island ecosystem, so they're bringing ashore nutrients from the polar Antarctic waters all the way onto land here and they actually help fuel these ecosystems and uh, elevate them in terms of forest and invertebrates and the whole life that's within them. So it's really important we maintain that linkage between way out to sea and the land. I'm uh, Ngāti Raikua Te Tonga but also Kaitahu and Titi is a, has played a big role in my life since a kid. Um, and one of the earliest uh, memories I have is actually being dressed up as a Titi chick for a whānau skit at a hui we were having. So. Yeah, it's very, I feel very privileged to be able to sit on this research, being Uri of Ngaitahu and Ngāti Titi face a lot of threats, both on land and at sea. So at sea it's climate change, it's overfishing, it's fishing mortalities. But here on land, what we can do arguably a little bit more about it, it's uh, predation, it's forest clearance, it's human impacts. In this particular project, it's, it seems to be weka having a major impact on the birds here. And so we're just looking at ways to mitigate that and hopefully mitigate the threats at sea and mitigate the threats on land as well, just so the species can thrive. A weka is a very busy bird. Um, he is a 
one of your best ground predators that you'll ever come across. Uh, with a huge motor, he doesn't stop all day and most of the night he's looking for food. So he's, he's a pretty awesome little bird. So I'm the Kairangaho Mātauranga Māori um, on this project. Uh, I'm a student at Te Wānanga Raukua. My role is to understand the values, the iwi, uh, Te Ati Awa Ki Whakarongotai, Ngāti Raukua Ki Te Tonga e Ngāti Tōrangatera have for the two manu, the titi and the weka, given that they're both Tonga species here on Kāpiti. Uh, weka are really smart, as many people will know, and they will figure out in those burrows that these titi live in there's a big fat chick to be eaten, so they will go down the burrow. Uh, once the chick is no longer guarded or protected by its parents, and then the, the weka will pull it out and eat it. I mean, we can do that one first since it doesn't require a burrow scrub. A big part of our work uh, involves, just like the weka, looking into the burrows, but uh, unlike uh, the weka, we're just trying to figure out how many of the burrows produce eggs, how many of those eggs then turn into chicks, and how many of those chicks ultimately fledge. That gives us an idea of the productivity and that's something we can then directly compare with mana and that's how we tease apart the impact of weka on carp DTT. So those burrows are three, sometimes four meters long and very complex. So you feed this burrow scope down to, uh, to look into the burrows and figure out what's going on and which of the chicks survive. checks in in like late January and now uh, just a couple of weeks later they're all empty and this is well before their fledging time so it's likely that they've all been cleared out by Weka. Pretty depressing result unfortunately. I was hoping for 13 big fat checks of course but yeah. Unfortunately this has been uh, probably the worst season on record. Weka have done a really, really good job at locating every chick and we had a complete nest failure for TT this year, probably because of Weka predation. Am I the end or...? So the more we learn, the more we can design countermeasures. That way we can figure out if we, for example, want to use a modification to burrows or maybe, um, you know, like fencing off or seasonal harvest, but we don't know so, um, what, what the solution will be, but the information that we gather will help um, Iwi, for example, to, to decide what the best way forward is um, to manage both Weka and TT appropriately. So far the framework is looking at um, two networks of values for each manu, and then hopefully where those networks intersect is where we can realise some solutions for resolving the conflict between them. For this population, really the hope is that it will continue to thrive, that we may actually see cultural harvests begin again on the island and we're just getting sustainable numbers year on year that uh, the bird not only is bringing back all the benefits to this beautiful island but also for the people that come here. Mm -hmm.